there is a little bit of a big football game this weekend, and, and that is your alma mater. You, we talked about this a little bit in Atlanta, and I mentioned this to Jeremy Pruitt because he's an Alabama guy and I'm a Tennessee guy, and I go in the building and there's a bunch of Alabama guys running a program at Tennessee, and you said – you go to an SEC coaches meeting and it's like an old Saban staff meeting, yeah. but it's a little. It, 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 all right, how does it feel? Be honest. Is there a little bit where you're like, oh wait, that's that's my, that's my old school, but I got to beat them today. Well, I overcame that a long time ago. I finished in 1994 playing, and then in 1995, I was a graduate assistant at Auburn, and we played it at, at Sanford <laughs> Stadium. So I, 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 that was the weirdest time because I knew a lot of the players that I played with and the coaching staff was still there. So I've learned through the years that uh, certainly had a wonderful time at the University of Georgia, but on Saturday we look forward to beating them. What does all gas, no brakes mean to you? Obviously, you've instilled that mantra in your team program and in your kids what is it to you personally well I think as much as anything it's about all effort all the time when I mean, we talk in terms of effort toughness and discipline within our organization and it's every single day uh, of chopping the wood every single day working every single day to bring the best version of you and, and focusing on that and that to me is as much as anything when we talk in terms of all gas no brakes we as writers and, and fans and whatever else all completely overreacted the first week of the season the first game of the season this team's the worst team ever, and this team's the best team ever. Where do you as a coach, uh, what's your approach to week one, and what are the lessons that you try to distill from that when you go to your meetings on Sunday? Create the best opportunity to be the best team we can be in week one, and I thought that we were extremely efficient offensively. Uh, obviously, there's some things to correct, yes. I thought we did a nice job defensive for the most part. We did not finish the game very well, and I thought we can make a lot of improvements on special teams from week one to week two. Speaking of week one, coach, when you, you know, you open the season, there's always question marks. You're sending 18 to 21 year old young men out there and they don't have any preseason, right? Well, you had another obstacle. That would be Jay-Z and Beyonce tearing <laughs> yeah. your field apart. Yeah. We had a plan. You, okay. <laughs> Describe the plan, first of all, and I appreciate to whom you gave the game ball. Describe it for us. Well, Clark Cox and, and our facilities people do a phenomenal job here, but we had a plan. We knew we were going to have to replace the field before we ever had the concert, and Coach Tanner and I talked about it. I was totally good with it as far as having a lay-and-play field, which they do this in a lot of NFL stadiums, and it certainly worked well for us. Our turf was outstanding. Now, we're all old enough to remember, though, when they first started trying this 20, 25 years ago, it didn't work so great. I, I covered a lot of games where we were picking up chunks of turf. Well, like me, after I played 18 holes of golf, we were placing every divot on the field. Were you a little bit nervous? Because the, the pictures were shocking when you looked at the stadium and there's a game like six days away and they ain't any grass on the field. Well, I've looked at the NFL teams that do it two or three days after a concert. So I, I didn't really have any concern. And Clark's the best there is that I've been around as far as a football coach is concerned. So I had all the confidence in him to get the job done. So you're at Georgia as a defensive back, as a walk-on when you were a student there. How do you still carry the walk-on mentality? Um, earning it every single day. And I, and I always love having walk-ons. And you look in terms, since I've been at South Carolina, Hayden Hurst was a first-rounder, was a walk-on in our program. Jacob August was a walk-on in our program. So guys that I'm really proud of that have come in here and, and earned an opportunity to earn a scholarship, uh, because of what they've done on the playing field and in the classroom. And uh, I think there's a certain edge to you uh, as a walk-on because you don't get the same opportunity sometimes as a scholarship player does. You don't get the same looks. You don't get the same uh, things that, that, that maybe a scholarship player does. And to earn a scholarship says an awful lot to me about the character of a young man. So how much time do you spend? Because most coaches, head coaches, the walk-ons are kind of over in the corner and they're doing their thing and whatever. The head coach might not look at them all year. How much time do you spend walking down there putting your arm around them going, dude, I get it? No, I w you don't get treated any differently here as a walk-on as a scholarship player. And I, that's, that's the way I've been my entire coaching career as far as treating walk-ons. They're, they're, they're no different than a scholarship player to me. All right, let's look ahead to Georgia. When you look at Saturday, what concerns you most about the Bulldogs? 
Well, I, you know, how much time do you have? They're, they're, they're a really good football team. He's extre- recruited extremely well. They, team speed, number one, jumps out at you. They're massive in the offensive line. They've got some really talented guys that can score from anywhere on the field. They've got an experienced quarterback that led them to a national championship game and won the Southeastern Conference. Defensively, uh, Coach Smart and, and Coach Tucker do a fantastic job. So, you know, we've got our work cut out for us. They did lose some guys on defense, but they've recruited extremely well. And when you see these guys on tape, they, they, they're very impressive. And then their overall team speed takes over uh, on special teams. They've got really good team speed and good, good returners. Uh, well, Marty, I think we – we a visitor got, show. Oh, up. no, I'm sorry. We have a <laughs> uh, – Cocky's Hi, here. Cocky. And uh, Cocky uh, has an, uh, an additional question for you here, Coach. All right, now, now something we're going to talk about coming up on the show is uh, 1986 is the last time that Kentucky beat Florida in football. You were part of that. You, you were 4-0 against uh, Kentucky when you were down there. Uh, Cocky wants to know, Coach, uh, what were you doing and what kind of style were you rocking in 1986? <laughs> 1986. I'm trying to think about how old I was. See, I was born in 71. Okay, so that's 15. Uh, 15 that years old. Thinking about prom, maybe a little bit. I don't know, 15. That was a little early for prom, wasn't it? I don't. Depending maybe on how big of a stud you were. <laughs> um, I do remember the game because I was living in Gainesville, Florida at the time. It was up in Lexington, and I think it was a 13-7 game or 13-10 game, if that if my memory serves me correct. Uh, but uh, so that's that's a long time ago. I know that. Well, you, did you? We were very serious about mullets around here. Where did you have a mullet? Of course, in the he 80s? had a mullet. We both oh, had. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Did you have a rat tail coach? Did you go below the earlobe? Below the earlobe. Yeah. Had the Steve Tannehill rat tail. That's uh, <laughs> it, 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 it was just foreshadowing what you were going to do for a living.